Hello. I just finished a uh, conversation with my ongoing Art of Living group, and we were looking at patience. One of the folks in the group commented that it looks to her like one of the keys to living wisely and well and working wisely and well is to cultivate patience. Uh, we had been talking about how each of us has a perfectly functional GPS system, internal guidance system, that delivers the, the information, the inspiration, uh, the guidance that is formulated specifically for each moment in our lives in work, and that we often innocently muck it up because we have a head full of personal concepts about what we should be doing, where we should be going, how fast things should be moving, or in some cases, that things shouldn't be moving so fast. And we muck up our capacity to respond wisely and well in the moment because we're innocently imposing a lot of assessments, uh, opinions, uh, worries, and analysis that aren't actually contributing to the quality of the data and insight at hand. And in response to that, one of, one of my clients said, well, that takes patience. And I've so many times in our meetings, I've written down patience, cultivate patience. And what I said to her is, it looks like it's patience. But patience is a side effect of understanding how life works, understanding how you work, understanding how you work optimally. And when you understand how you work optimally, it's natural to exercise restraint when you recognize that you're not optimized. Like it's natural to not pick up the phone and make the angry phone call when you have a deep recognition that that isn't likely to work. You don't really have to restrain yourself by an application of will if you know it won't help. You may still want to, you're just as angry, you're just as wound up. It just doesn't make sense to make that phone call. People often tell me, my latest sock, that they wish they could knit, but they just don't have the patience. And that's always puzzled me. It's like, I don't have patience either. It would drive me crazy to wait for a sock to get done. But I don't wait for a sock to get done. I make socks. I don't wait while I'm working on a sweater for it to be finished. I'm making the sweater. I'm engaged in it. There is no waiting, no patience required. No patience required because I understand how the sock is created and I understand my role in that creation and I'm good with it. So when it comes to taking action in life and running into roadblocks, there's a way in which sometimes we, uh, it's like we're stuck in the mud and we can spin our wheels and shred the tires, or we can look for a way out of the stuckness. Spinning our wheels and shredding our tires uh, just doesn't make sense to most of us. I've done it a time or two. I think I was a slow learner. But once I learned that spinning your wheels will shred your tires, I stopped using that. And it didn't require patience for me to sit in the car and look for a better way. Doesn't mean I wasn't frustrated, doesn't mean I, in fact, I was impatient to get out of the jam, but I didn't do the stupid thing in service of my impatience. I had the patience to look for a way out. It might be uh, opening the trunk and getting a shovel out. It might be getting a plank out. It might be making a phone call. It might be walking up to the road and waving someone down. I mean, there's any number of ways that you look for a way forward. And these ways emerge when you have the 
intelligence, when you tap into your intelligence, to recognize what doesn't help. This may not sound like a big deal, but recognizing what doesn't help in a deep and profound way takes a lot off your mind. And when you've taken that off your mind, so many things that we think of as skills, patience, acceptance, wonder, creative thought, uh, making new connections, looking for a new way, uh, being open-minded, those emerge naturally out of the intelligence that we're part of when we understand how life works, when we understand that there's a certain state of mind in which we're tire spinning, and we recognize that trying harder from there will only shred our tires. When we understand that, even if we don't know yet what to do instead, we can plug into the intelligence to stop spinning our tires. And in that space, every time, some new possibility will arise. Now, if we're trying to manage the, the emergence of the new possibility, we're, we're doing a subtle kind of tire spinning. We're still adding pressure to the situation. So take some insight and some appreciation of when you've had this going for you in your life to cultivate a feel for spinning your tires and not spinning your tires mentally. And you absolutely can do this. You know of times when you've done tire spinning and when you haven't done tire spinning. And I'm saying that all you really need to know is that not spinning your tires reconnects you to new possibilities and new options. While you're spinning your tires, you can't see what's available. As soon as you stop spinning them, you become available to solutions. You're not in charge of the timing. You're not in charge of the nature of the solution. And the more deeply you understand the difference between spinning your tires and opening your mind, the more quickly and simply you'll notice that next steps emerge. They may or may not look like full-blown solutions, but you will always see a next immediate step. And that's always an improvement over shredding your tires. I'd love to hear uh, where this lands, what lands, what doesn't. So email me or comment. Thanks for watching.